So good morning and welcome to Real Life Church Online. I'm Pastor Bob and I'll be leading us this morning as we wrap up this series called Rethinking Your Thinking. Now we've been in this series for nine weeks. We've looked at rethinking our thinking about ourselves, rethinking what we think about God, and rethinking what we think about life. Now before I get into this morning's topic, which is going to be a real life topic, let me tell you about a brand new teaching series that starts next week. We're going to be looking at the book of 1 Peter. We're going to be going verse by verse or a few verses at a time, asking ourselves those same three questions we always ask. What does the passage say? What does the passage mean? And most importantly, how can I put this passage into my everyday life? So do you want to get ahead? If you do, you want to read the first 12 verses of 1 Peter um, in preparation for next week. Now, like I said, we have a real life message this morning. We're gonna be talking about rethinking our thinking when we're talking about temptation. Because so many of us, we get into this cycle of wanting to have good intentions, and then we fail, and then we have guilt. We try to do the right thing, but because of some persistent temptation, we fail, and then the guilty feelings come, and then, you know, we get trapped. This is gonna be a very practical message that I pray that you'll use in your everyday life. Whether your temptation is big or small, I pray that God's gonna give you some clear ways to defeat that temptation. So I have lots to cover. Let's jump right into it. If we're gonna defeat temptation, we have to understand how temptation works. Now, Satan has been using this same trick um, ever since God put two human beings on earth. And he uses it because it's pretty darn successful. And ever since those first two human beings, people have been falling for this trick time after time after time. And really the Bible doesn't want us to be ignorant of how Satan works, especially when it comes to your life. When we understand how temptation works, then we have a better chance of resisting and being prepared for when that predictable pattern of temptation will come into our life. Now, the pattern is found in Genesis chapter 3, at the very first temptation where Satan comes to Eve, and he basically says, what about that good fruit that's hanging over you? Has God really said that you can't eat of any tree in the garden? Now, we know that's not what God said. God said they could eat of any tree in the garden except that one tree. And Satan always has a way of kind of manipulating what God says and what he's trying to get us to do. And then he goes on to put a little bit more pressure on Eve. He says, did God really say you couldn't eat of this tree? Why don't you go ahead and try it? And by the way, you're not going to die you know, you're going to become more like God. And this is the pattern that Satan uses over and over and over. Matter of fact, it's the pattern I put in your sermon guide, okay? And if you have downloaded the sermon guide, you'll be able to fill in those blanks um, as we kind of go along this morning. So the first step in this pattern that Satan likes to use is he has this wrong desire that's within us. Now, our hearts are not naturally good. Our hearts are naturally wicked, according to the Bible. There's always some type of wrong desire within us. Maybe it's envy or lust, gossip, being impatient, revenge. I mean, those are all different types of wrong desires. But did you know that temptation also can come with the right desire? I mean, a legitimate desire, but trying to fulfill that legitimate desire, we do it in the wrong way and it becomes a temptation. Now, by the right kind of temptation, we have this normal desire for sex, okay? We have a normal desire for food, and there's nothing wrong with it. A, a normal desire to be loved, but there are wrong ways to fulfill sex, food, and desire. So I hope that kind of makes sense. We can have temptations that are based on wrong motivations, and we can have temptations that are based on wrong desires, 
and right desires. Now, besides desire, step two in this whole pattern that Satan likes to use is he gets us to doubt God's word. Did you see it in there? In Genesis chapter three, verses one through six, did God really say, okay, don't get even? Did God really say that you really shouldn't have sex outside of marriage? Did God really say it's okay to take revenge? I mean, those are those subtle deceptions that, you know, Satan likes to put in to our life. Now, why this is important is because we said, all right, that what we think about often becomes our action and our behavior. So this whole idea about deception, Satan uses it and he says, you're really not going to die, are you? It's not really a big deal, is it? See, we buy into a lie that Satan perpetuates instead of adhering to what God says. We're deceived, okay? And by the way, when we have the wrong motivation, when we doubt God's word, when we are deceived, this is where disobedience comes in, and that's the last part. Now, we're going to unpack a whole lot about how to overcome this pattern. And so we got nine different steps. And I know what you're thinking already, nine steps, okay? It's going to be a long message. Really, it's not, okay? But it is full of practical application because I want you to be able to defeat whatever those temptations they are. I know that there are big ones out there and I know that there are small ones, but I want you to be able to overcome them by changing the way you think. So first of all, we understand the pattern. And next thing we got to do is we got to find out what makes us vulnerable to sin. What makes us give in? In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, it says that we're not to give the devil an opportunity. Another translation, we're not supposed to give him a foothold. I'm going to tell you something. Satan knows you. He knows what makes you tick. He knows what temptations you are specifically vulnerable to. And that's what makes him dangerous. So when he comes in, okay, we're not supposed to give the devil an opportunity. In other words, we're supposed to know what temptations and the area of temptation that we're susceptible to. Remember the proverb we've been using for this whole series? Be careful about what you think because your thoughts control your life. We're supposed to guard our hearts and our emotions, okay? We're, trying to de we're supposed to defeat temptation, not by changing our behavior, but by changing our heart and changing our mind. Satan isn't looking to influence your behavior. He's looking to influence the way you think, because however you think, that's how we're going to act. Now, I want to give us a little heart test this morning, because if we're supposed to guard our hearts, let's do a heart checkup. Let's find out whether you're really vulnerable or not, because there are certain things that happen in life that make us more vulnerable to temptation. So we're gonna take a little quiz here, okay, if you wanna call it, or self-introspection if you wanna call it. We're gonna ask ourselves a series of 10 questions. And what I want you to do is I want you to grade yourself from zero to four. Zero means you have a real problem with this, and you'll see how it works here in just a second. And four means, this is very positive in my life and I have no problem with it at all. So the best score you can have is a 40. But I also, I just want to caution you. Let's be honest with each other, okay? Because you can make your score say whatever you want it to be, but really what we're trying to do is find some practical ways to be able to overcome temptation. So be honest with yourself. You don't have to share your answers with anybody, okay? Um, but just examine your own heart. Find out if you're vulnerable to temptation. So right now, at this very moment, are you physically exhausted? I mean, do you find it hard to get out of bed? I mean, are, are you finding it hard to have enough energy from the day? Or would you classify yourself energetic and in shape? So whatever you are, okay, if you're, if you're more physically exhausted, you wanna put yourself as a zero, one, two, and if you're kind of energetic and in shape, maybe a three or four, okay? So go ahead and mark yourself right now. And we're gonna do that with these next nine questions also. Are you mostly discouraged and pessimistic? I mean, you find that everything just to be pretty much negative in life. Are you encouraged and optimistic? 
I have my own scores that I'm doing here also. So are, are you bored right now and discontented? I mean, just kind of just unhappy with things. Or are you challenged and what I would call content? What's your score? Zero to four. Are you spiritually dry right now? Or what we would say empty. I mean, is your relationship with God on a, a, a you know, kind of on a, a downslide right now? Or is it spiritually growing? Are you growing in your relationship with Jesus? Zero to four, your choice right now. Are you lonely and distant? Are you loved and close? Okay, that's a tough one right there. Zero to four. I'm insecure and unsure of myself, or I'm confident and secure. Where did you come out on that one? How about I'm deeply wounded or hurt right now? Or I'm understood and I'm valued. I'm holding on to unforgiveness. Or it's easy for me to forgive everyone. All right, how about two more now? I'm sad or I'm grieving a loss. Is that happening for you right now? Or do you feel happy today? Zero to four. Last one. I'm frustrated. Okay. Or I'm fulfilled and productive. So now what I want you to do is I want you to go up and add up where you are in this heart check, if you want to call it. If you, if you gave yourself all fours, it's really easy. You got a 40. Okay. Um, I'm not so sure that there's probably anybody out there that probably got a 40. Now, this is why it's important because when you start to add up these different categories of things, like if you're feeling lonely right now and you're frustrated and you're discouraged, well, that means you, you, you're susceptible to temptation. What if you're frustrated and you're angry and you're hurt? Well, that's a powerful mixture and you're vulnerable to temptation. So here comes the scoring chart. Okay, are you ready? If you're at a 35 to 40, you're in pretty good shape. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to tell you, I didn't land there. Okay. So 35 to 40 was a little bit too high for me, but it says if you're between 25 and 35 means you're vulnerable and you need to be careful. That's why the proverb says, be careful about what you think about, because what we think about controls our actions. That's where I'm at. I'm in the 25 to 35 range. Okay. Also be careful because you're easy pickings for Satan to bring a temptation along your way. Now, if you're a 15 to 25, you're in extreme danger. And you're, you're really, honestly, your heart is emotionally set up to fail. Okay, well, let's talk about that here in a second. And if you're below 15 right now, um, well, the grading, grading criteria says you're in crisis, okay? And you know you're in crisis. And when you're in crisis, you are very vulnerable to, again, temptations that Satan brings along. And more than likely, if you're below that 15 mark, you're already struggling with temptations. And you're probably just a phone call away from needing some really good help. And we can get you that help. You can call Pastor Augie. You can call I. We have resources at our disposal to be able to help you, regardless of whether you're a 15 or lower or a 15 to 25 or you're a 25 to 35. We have resources to be able to help you. Okay, so the stronger you are emotionally, the more ability you have to fight off temptation. Now, another good question to ask yourself when we're talking about doing this heart checkup is, how long have you been in this current emotional situation. I mean, the longer you've been in this situation, the more volatile you are to Satan and temptation. The longer you've been in grief, the longer you've been in anger, again, the more vulnerable you are. Now, hope that little heart checkup was useful to you. Proverbs, okay, says in 14, Verse eight, it says, the wise man looks ahead, but a fool, he tries to fool himself and he won't face facts. Well, a lot of times we don't want to face facts because we don't like what we look at. And maybe your number's high or maybe your number is low. But what we need to also do is learn what our pattern of temptation is. 
okay? That's your um, fill in the blank right there. Learn what your pattern of temptation is. And this is the way you do that. You start to ask yourself a series of questions. First of all, when are you tempted the most? What day of the week is it? What time of the day is it? Who's at home when you're tempted? So when are you tempted the most? Secondly, where are you tempted? Is it at work? Is it in the kitchen? Is it at your neighbor's house? I mean, is it shopping? Is it a sports bar? Is it your computer? Is it at the beach? Where do you find yourself tempted? Well, you, this is your pattern, okay? Not my pattern, but your pattern. Where's your pattern of temptation? The third question is, who's with you when you're tempted? Are you alone when you're tempted? Are you out with the guys or maybe out with the girls? Are you out with someone from the opposite sex? Who are you with when you're tempted? Now, the fourth question, okay, uh, of five, all right, it says, um, what temporary benefit do I get when I give in to that temptation? Why am I saying yes? Now, is it making you feel better? Okay. Um, when you give in to that temptation, um, do you get comfort from that when you give in to that temptation? Maybe a temporary excitement or a false confidence that comes with that temptation? I mean, we're, we're hitting some hard things this morning. This is not a feel-good message, okay? This is a tough one this morning. Now, um, remember this, okay? And it's not in your sermon guide. It's free for those of you that are listening. Hebrews chapter 11 says that sin, okay, and pleasure are just for a moment. And man, wouldn't it be cool if all of our temptation didn't make us feel good? I mean, that, <laughs> we wouldn't do it, right? But a lot of times sin and, and pleasure of temptation actually gives us an euphoria around us and we feel good about it. That's why we do it. Now, the fifth question I want to ask you is how do you feel right before you're tempted to act on that temptation? Okay. Do you get frustrated with yourself? Do you have a little bit of condemnation with yourself? Do you have a little argument with yourself? Do you get angry with yourself? I mean, how do you feel? And when you start to ask yourself these questions, you're developing your pattern. And this is really important. Um, I know we're getting personal, but it's really important as we kind of get into the next stage of this idea of overcoming our temptation. And this is where things become a little bit more practical, okay? In Proverbs chapter four, um, again, we've been there a lot. It says that we're supposed to plan carefully the things that we do, and we're supposed to avoid evil. You know how we're supposed to avoid evil? We're supposed to plan to not be there, okay? Um, I don't know. If you don't want to get stung by a bee, um, don't go where bees are, okay? Um, that, that's really important. I mean, that's really deep right now. But if your temptation always seems to be at a place with a person during a certain time, what you have to do to overcome this temptation is not be with that person at that place during that certain time, okay? So we're gonna plan, okay, to carefully avoid evil. Now, let's get a little bit personal, all right? Look, I've been on a diet for like four months now, all right, and, if I, and I actually plan my meals out. You know why I plan my meals out? Because if I don't have a plan, Jack in the Box is right down the street, okay? McDonald's is right around the corner, okay? There's lots of fast food places, and I'll tell you what, if I don't have a plan, it's too convenient for me to get in my car and go and do something else. See, if you struggle with drinking, probably one of the places that you wanna avoid is a bar or a sports bar um, so you can have victory over that temptation. If you, if you struggle with pornography, Maybe you need to avoid smartphones and computers and tablets, etc. Maybe if you spend uncontrollably, maybe you got to give up the credit card or the debit card, the checkbook, whatever it is, until you can overcome that temptation. But what about temptations you don't plan for? I mean, I, I can plan for my temptations, but I mean those that happen right there on the spot. Oh man, you're driving, okay? Somebody cuts you off, you become angry, how are you going to deal with this temptation right now? 
I'm glad you asked, okay, because that's going to bring us right next to our, our, our next practical teaching point here, is sometimes we got to cry out to God immediately. You know, the Bible's full of people um, that prayed some emergency prayers. Uh, well, there was David, and there was uh, Peter, and there was Paul, and there's several other people that there were things happening in their life, and they would lift up like what we would call an SOS prayer or a mayday, mayday, mayday prayer. Help, I'm in trouble. I need your help right now, God. And then interesting, when we cry out to God, um, we can use his word, all right, to help us defeat temptation, okay? That's why the psalm says, okay, in 119.11, the word I've hidden in my heart, okay, that I might not sin against God. Remember, okay, remember this. Jesus faced temptations also. Yet he was able to overcome them by what? Crying out to God and using scripture. The Bible says that Jesus was tempted exactly the same way we are tempted. And he understands our temptations. He cried out to God and he used scripture. Now, I want to say this also, because sometimes, you know, we get some false teaching in there that I want to clear up. Temptation by itself is not a sin. Okay, Uh, we are going to be tempted every day of our life. It's what we do with the temptation. If temptation was a sin, then Jesus sinned and we know that he was sinless. Okay, so it's what we do with the sin that gets us in trouble. All right. Now, the next thing we've talked about, and I'm not going to make a big deal about this, but sometimes when we're being tempted, we tend to... focus on ourself way too much. When we're tempted, the easier way to overcome temptation is to refocus our attention on something else. A few weeks ago, we talked about this in depth. We can refocus ourselves on Jesus. We can refocus ourselves on others, um, all kinds of different ideas. But the key thing I want to kind of, I want to go back to, and I said this in week one of this series, and, and we're kind of working full circle now. Look, if, if you're doing something and temptation is coming your way and you, you know that you're sliding in the wrong direction with that temptation, it is definitely time to change the channel. I said that in week one, change the channel. I mean, if you're doing something or watching TV and it's, it's making you sad or it's making you sexually aroused or uh, whatever it is and it's leading you down a, 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 a path towards temptation, it is definitely time to change the channel. Don't resist the temptation. Change the stupid channel. Refocus and do something completely different. Romans chapter 12. Okay, says that we're not supposed to let evil conquer us, but we're to conquer evil with what? Good. And that's called the replacement, okay? Um, Instead of saying, no, 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 I'm not going to do this. 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 You know what you're focusing on? Negative. What we have to do is replace that temptation with something positive, okay? And and refocus ourselves. Now, this next one, this practical application is, is, is huge, okay? And it's the one I think that we fight against a lot, okay? If we're going to overcome temptation, the way to do that is join a small group. And you said, oh, I knew you were going to say that. Look, okay, I'm serious about this. In Hebrews chapter 10, it says that we're not supposed to, you know, forsake the assembling of ourselves um, together, but we're to encourage one another, Let me tell you something, that happens in small group. And it's pretty cool because I've discovered this a long time ago. When you start talking to people about the things that tempt you, the struggles that you have in your life, you know, when you develop those friendships with a a group of people, that temptation and that sin begins to lose power over you. Now, so the more people you tell, the less likely you are to get engaged in that temptation. Now, when we think about this, you know, small group is great, okay? But sometimes even the temptations we're having, we don't want to tell a small group about, okay? 
And so let me encourage you to do this also. Enlist one friend that you can share your struggle with. I like to call those people accountability people. The people you can be, you know, really honest with, that you can share your own personal struggle with. You can be honest with them and they can be honest with you. You know, that's why the Bible says in that book called Ecclesiastes, I think it says it says that two are better than one because together they can do a lot of things. If one falls down, the other can help them up. But if someone is alone and they fall down, then there's no one to help them up. Someone that you give permission to ask you the hard questions. Someone you're not going to get uptight with or upset with when they check on you. Look, some of us have had temptations in our life for maybe 50 years because you were really never serious about getting rid of them. And one of the reasons you're, you're not too serious about that is you never told anyone about it. Some of us will die with the same habits that we've had, the same temptations and, and that um, wanting to do good, but um, failing and then feeling guilty about it. We'll die with it because we're not really willing to be transparent with someone else. Get a friend, get a coach, get a sponsor, get an accountability partner. Help find a soulmate, okay? Whatever it is, someone that you can give permission to share your struggle with. Galatians chapter six, and I'm just gonna paraphrase this, says that when we help others, okay? When we help others with our troubles, it says that we're obeying the law of Christ. Um, we're loving people just like Jesus loved them. Okay, we're loving our neighbor. Now, there's one last practical step I want to give to you, and then I'm going to pray. Here's the key. Remember, God is on your side. God is bigger than your temptation. God is bigger than your struggle. God is bigger than all of that. Look, he's rooting for you. I, I, I hate to say that because it almost sounds corny, okay? He's rooting for, he wants you to overcome this struggle that you're having. He wants you to be able to stop this area in your life. I'm going to tell you something, okay? The Bible says this very clearly, that God doesn't allow temptation into our life that he is not faithful to and that he will not provide a way out for. And honestly, we've talked about nine different things today that God is providing you a way out on, that you can escape that temptation. God is on your side. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I love this verse. This is a great verse to end on. But we thank God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Man, that's a powerful verse. See, if your will was strong enough, you would have broke the habit a long time ago. But the solution is through Jesus Christ. And through him, we can and we do have victory. Now, do you want to break that same old cycle that we've been talking about? Wanting to do good, but failing over and over, and then feeling guilty about it? And, and let me just say this. Don't think that I'm only speaking to like 5% of us today. I'm speaking to everybody. Every one of us has a temptation. Every one of us has a struggle with temptation. Okay? Don't kid yourself. Okay? You're one. God wants you to have victory over that temptation. If you are struggling today, I do want you to know this. You're not alone. There are other people that are listening. There are other people that are watching. There are other people that are here in church today, okay, that have that same struggle. What could happen if you would take these steps and practically put them in place in your life? So here's the prayer um, that I want to pray for you and for me this morning. God, you know all of our temptations in our life. You know everything that trips us up and has tripped us up for years. Lord, you know um, the tempting situations I'm facing right now. And what's amazing to me, God, you even know the temptations that lay ahead of me next week. The ones I don't even know about. You know exactly what's in front of me. God, I'm asking for your help. I'm willing to follow these principles. I'm willing to change the patterns in my life that lead to temptation. 
I'm willing, Father, to do my heart examination and be careful about those things that I think about. When I'm hit with an emergency situation, God, help me to remember to cry out to you, to use your scripture, to quote scripture to myself, and help me to refocus my attention on the other things when I'm tempted. I know I can't handle this myself. I commit to finding a small group and getting involved in a small group, people that are just like me where I can encourage and be encouraged by them. God, help me to find that one friend that I can invite into my life, that I give permission to check up on me. I need a friend like that. Lord, help me to find that person. Most important, God, I need you to do heart surgery on me. Remove those negative emotions that make me vulnerable and replace them with your love and your forgiveness and your trust. Jesus, I want to make these changes from the inside out, beginning right now. I want to follow you completely. I want you to manage my life. I want you to save me, not just from hell, but even from myself. God, I humbly ask this in your name. Amen. Man, I hope that was your prayer, and I hope that you got something out of this message today. If you're struggling with temptation, give us a call. Let us know. Drop us an email. Let us know that you're struggling so we can go back over these principles and help you overcome them. All right. I can't wait to see you next week when we begin to talk about 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. And until then, we'll see you next time. Thank you.